and stir masjid at any time even if that particular time is the time which is prohibited in our last class we discussed some of the times which are prohibited isn't it there are three times and the three is further divided into five if you enter masjid al haram you can pray at any time there is no issue at all there is no issue at all there is another important principle that we need to understand here is that if a person goes to masjid al haram if he wants to do tawaf if he wants to do tawaf then he will not pray tahiyatul masjid then he will be directly doing tawaf but if a person wants to sit and he doesn't want to make tawaf in that case he will make tahiyatul masjid rakatain that is the rights of the masjid to raka salah subhanahu to raka salah in masjid al haram so what we understand from this hadith is that you can pray at any time and there is no restriction or prohibited times when it comes to the prayer in masjid al haram when i was in makkah subhanallah some people used to fight with each other if somebody is praying for example you entered after asr and he is praying some other group will come and you know, they will be beating him up i have seen with my own eyes subhanallah but they do not know what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says this is because of the ignorance this is because we do not have the knowledge subhanallah طيب we will go to the hadith number 138 wa an ibn umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الشفق الحمرة رواه الدار قطني وصحه ابن حبان وغيره وقفا طيب this hadith رسول الله ابن عمر رضي الله عنه he says that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the twilight is a redness in order to understand the timing of the maghrib the timing of the maghrib normally we live in the we live in cities it's very rare that we can see the you know the 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 fajran fajrun yuharrimu ta'am wa da'wa tu'malat as-subh wa yuhillu fihi ta'am rawahu ibn khuzaimah wa ibn al hakim wa sahaha lil hakim min hadith jabir nahmu wa zada fi fi alladhi yuharrimu ta'am innahu yadhhabu mustatilan fi fi al-waqf fi al-ufuq وفي الاخر انه كذنب سرحان سرحان طيب this particular hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says the fajr is if he wants to sit in the masjid if he want he doesn't want to make tawaf in that case obviously he has to make tahiyatul masjid If he wants to make tawaf directly, we enter Masjid al-Haram and if he wants to make tawaf, then he will be going making tawaf directly. Yeah, yeah it will badal. Because he will be praying two rakat after that. That is sunnah. That will be falling into that. Uh, it's fine now. Barakallahu alfiq. Taib. Wa'an Abi Mahdurata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala أول الوقت رضوان الله وأوسطه رحمة رحمة الله وآخره أكو الله سبحان الله. This hadith is ضعيف. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو محضورة أبو محضورة is from among the muaddin of مكة during the time of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says that أول الوقت رضوان الله. The 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 earliest time of the prayer is what pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa awsatuhu rahmatullahi and mid of the timing of the prayer is something which is a mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhiruhu where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon it but this particular hadith is daif daif jiddan there is no uh, base it is not lam yathbutu ani nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam which is not proven from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam tayyib 1142 hadith number 142 وعن ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا صلاة بعد الفجر إلا سجدتين أخرجه الخمسة إلا إلا النسائي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that there is no prayer after there is no prayer after صلاة الصبح صلاة الفجر but sometimes what happens some people might pray two rakat after the fajr isn't it and this has been proved 
from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that one of the sahabi he missed two rakat of salatul fajr so except this you can't pray any two rakat after salatul fajr it is haram it is impermissible by doing that it is not only that you are yukhalifu sunnah it is you are not following the sunnah but also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for that people think that not following the sunnah is fine or oh, isn't it but not doing something is fine but doing something thinking that it is sunnah is not fine isn't it why because thinking that it is from the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rather when it is not from the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will be punished for that you will be punished for that if you are not doing it that's a different thing that's a matter of discussion we are not going in detail but if you think and if you do something which is not from the sunnah but thinking that is sunnah from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will be punished for that so we have to be very careful as to what to be sunnah as not to be what not to be sunnah inshallah taala Ex- that's what the hadith says only in this one illa sajdatain or rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned here illa sajdatain illa sajdatain sajda means not to sajda he makes sajda in the usul al fiqh if you see one sajda means it is complete rak'ah it is complete rak'ah okay try it all yeah that should be before sun just immediately after the prayer you can't wait finish the quran you know you can't you, you have to do immediately just after the fajr salatul fajr وفي رواية وفي رواية عبد الرزاق لا صلاة بعد طلوع طلوع الفجر إلا ركعة الفجر. This hadith says, طلوع الفجر is different. بعد صلاة الفجر is different. What is the difference between both? طلوع الفجر is the starting of the fajr time. Now what is the starting fajr time in Bangalore? It's five twelve, I think. Five nine, five nine, five ten around this. So that is the طلوع الفجر. After that, you can't pray anything except two rakah of the fajr, of sunnah of the fajr. You can't pray anything else. You can't get up and pray istikhara. You can't get up and pray uh, what do you say? Any nawafil randomly. You can't pray. You can't pray witr at the time. You can't pray all these things. You have to, you can pray only two rakah salah. If you have, if you come to the masjid, there's one benefit of praying this. If you make niyyah of the two rakah of the prayer. and if you make the niyyah of tahiyatul masjid both you will be getting two rewards in one prayer and if you can make niyyah of uh, rakat al wudu two rakat of the wudu two rakat of tahiyatul masjid two rakat of the sunnah of the fajr if you make three niyyah in one prayer you will get three rewards how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made things easy for us isn't it so we need to take the maximum benefits that allah has allotted us you can't come and pray two rakat uh, wudu salah then two rakat tahiyatul masjid then two rakat what do you say sunnah so this applies any time for example now zuhar we offered some time before before zuhar we have 2 plus 2 sunnah right sunnah rawat so if you make niyyah when you enter the masjid two rakat sunnah two rakat tahiyatul masjid and two rakat wudu in one prayer you will be getting three rewards this is something which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us inshallah hadith number 143 wa an umm salama radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat salla rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al asra thumma dakhala bayti fa salla rakatayn فسالته فقال شغلت عن ركعتين بعد الظهر فصليتهما الان فقلت افقضيتهم افقضيت افقضيها اذا فاتها اذا فاتت قال لا اخرجه احمد ولابي داوود عن عائشه رضي الله عنها بمعناه طيب ذس حديث ام سلمه رضي الله عنها شي ناريتس ذات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انترز دي هاوس افتر دي صلاه العصر ثم دخل بيتي فصلى ركعتين ان هي بريت تو ركعات برايرز افتر عصر فسالته فقال دنا يا اسد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اباوت ذس تو ركعه شغلت عن ركعتين بعد الظهر اي واز بيزي افتر صلاه الظهر 
and I could not pray two rakat prayer. Fasallay to huma alan. So I prayed that two rakat now. That two rakat now. Fakul to I she asked. I asked. Afa afa yak afa ak. Afa akdi hima ida fata ta kalla. So if uh, should I offer if I miss them? Should I offer if I miss them? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no. So what does it mean? You can't make the qada of missed sunan at prohibited timings. But if you missed and if you want to make qada, you can make qada at other timings inshallah. Outside of, outside of, outside of the timing. Some of the ulama rahimahumullah they say this particular issue was only for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this, this particular issue of making qada of sunan rawatib after Asr. But if you want to make Qadha of Sun Rabati but any other time, ulama they say it's fine. It is fine to do that, inshallah. Yes. It's allowed, it's exception only for Rasulullah. Now we will go to the new chapter, Babul Adhan. Babul Adhan. Let me ask you a question before going to the chapter. Is Adhan a condition for the prayer? Hmm? Is Adhan a condition for the prayer? I pray, but Adhan was not given. I prayed, Adhan was not given. Salah accepted or it's invalid? Salah is valid or invalid? How many of you say it's valid? Rest of all of you say invalid? <laughs> yes, it is valid. Absolutely valid. You don't have to wait for the Adhan for the Salah to be accepted or for the Salah to be prayed. You can Pray inshallah ta'ala. What is the condition is dhul al waqt? What is the condition is in its timing. You can't pray fajr dhuhr. You can't make dhuhr at the fajr, isn't it? It has to be in its time. So adhan is not a condition. Adhan is not a condition. Adhan is from sunnah. What is the meaning of adhan? Adhan is calling the people towards the masjid, towards success. And we know the story of adhan, isn't it? We know the story. Zaid radiallahu an he saw the dream where he he saw a man when he was dreaming, uh, when he was uh, sleeping, he saw a man he, and he came and taught these words Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the other what we know. And the same dream was seen by Umar radiallahu an. And how this adhan started is when after going to Medina, when the salah was made obligatory, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was thinking as to how to invite people, call people towards the masjid. Some of them suggested, let's make a ring of the bell. Let's blow a horn. Let's make fire. Different, different ideas. You know, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they gave. And all these ideas are resembling the ideas of the kuffar. And that same night, some of the Sahabi, they see the dream. And next day they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And narrating the, the dream. And the adhan was established for us. Established for us. And if you see Adhan is Khususi Ummati Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There is no Adhan in the previous generations In the previous generations there is no Adhan If they have to call people towards the worship And there are no worship at the time In the sense as we have like five times prayer They can worship at any time And they didn't have Ruku and Sujood They might have Sujood but they don't have Those acts that we have Tashahud, reciting Salatu ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Dua and Ruku, Dua and Sujood They had a different way of worship But they used to worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So Adhan We will go to the first hadith Hadith number 144 Wa an Abdullah bin Zayd Ibn Abdir Abdir Rabbih Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal Tafa bi wa ana na'imun Rajulun faqala Faqala تقول الله أكبر الله أكبر فذكر الآن بتربيع تكبير تكبير بغير ترجيع والإقامة فرادا إلا قد قامت الصلاة قال فلما أصبحت أتيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال إنها لرؤية حق لحديث أخرج أحمد وأبو داود وسحها ترمذي وابن خزيمة this hadith is narrated by Zayd radiallahu an Abdullah bin Zayd radiallahu an He says that when he was dreaming 
Tafa bi. Tafa. What is the meaning of Tafa here? Tafa yatufu means rotating, right? No. Tafa here means the one who passed, a man who passed by. And he taught me these words. What are the words? The words of the Adam. Now in this hadith, فَذَكَرْ الْآنُ بِتَرْبِيهِ التَّكْبِيرِ بِغَيْرِ تَرْجِيَةِ Now when we say Adhan, there are three kinds of Adhan. There are three kinds of Adhan. A Adhan which is known as Al-Makhi Adhan. Adhan Al-Makhiya. There is Adhan called as Adhan Al-Madani. There is Adhan called as Adhan Al-Kufi. Kufa. There are three different Adhan. And three different Adhan has got three different wordings. Not the different wordings, but there is something called addition in that. There is something called addition. There is something called tarbiya. There is something called tarjiya. Remember this word. Tarbiya. We know, sir, we know that Abu Mahdurah radiallahu an was the muaddin in Mecca. After Fathu Mecca, after Fathu Mecca, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was walking in the streets of Mecca, and there were some disbelievers. Among them was this man, Abu Mahdura radiallahu an. So when he was imitating the Adhan, his voice was very beautiful. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to him and he kept his hand on his chest and he rubbed on his back and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became Muslim. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him Adhan and and from there he became the muaddin of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in makkah and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught him an adhan called at tarbiyah and what is tarbiyah we know that adhan has got how many words adhan has got 15 words adhan has got 15 words what are the 15 words allahu akbar allahu akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. Ashadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala falam. Hayya ala falam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. How many words now? Fifteen. Here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him nineteen words. Nineteen. And how is that? Tarbiyah bit tarjiyah. What is the meaning of it is that Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then he says silently, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Then again, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah ila akhir ila adhan. Now how many words it is? 19. Correct? 19. So we have something called 15. We have something called 19. So this adhan what we have nowadays normally we hear in all the masajids are adhan al-kufi which is 15. Adhan of Mecca was during time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after he taught him Fatu Mecca was 19 words. This is something called tarbiyah. Something called tarbiyah. In Medina in Medina, it is between 15 and 19, it is 17, it is 17 and how it is 17, listen to me carefully, the first two Allahu Akbar was removed, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, then there is Tarjeh now, there is Tarjeh, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Then Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Until the end of the Adhan Now how many words? 17 So Adhan of Medina is 17 The Adhan of Mecca is 19 The Adhan of Kufa is 15 And this is from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam All the Adhan are authentic All the Adhan are authentic authentic that's why we need to keep changing the adhan sometimes so that the people will learn the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if one of you go and give adhan like this one of the next moment you will find is you will have a bandage here because they do not know the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we the muaddin of the masajid in india and anywhere else we need to follow the sunnah we need to introduce not the bid'ah you will have another bandage here we have to introduce the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to introduce, we have to make the sunnah again live. 
this is what the sharia is isn't it subhanallah so these are the different varieties of adhan and this particular adhan is known as tarji'ah tarji'ah with tarbiyah tarbiyah means four and tarji'ah means making it lower making it lower am i clear about this tayyib and the further in the hadith this is mentioned that wal iqamah wal iqamah al furada when you make adhan in twos then you, you have to make ikama as single single we say allahu akbar allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah hayya lis salah hayya lil falah qad qamati salah qad qamati salah the word qad qamati salah is the word these two sentences are added in in the ikama okay tayyib but it has to be once okay now if somebody give adhan and ikama the same if somebody gives ikama the same as adhan is it bidah is it correct if you go to some of the masajids here other masajids hanafiya masajids and uh, deobandi masajids they give adhan the same they give ikama the same is it wrong or is it right what is sahi hmm tell me is it bidah no because we have a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam even on that if you read ibn majah ibn majah there is one hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is sahih which is sahih that the adhan was given twice and the ikama is also was given the same way as the adhan but the riwayat but the many narrations regarding the the uh, many riwayat narrations regarding the making the ikama yutir are plenty so we take more riwayats and we follow that particular thing and even if somebody is doing this absolutely no problem inshallah taala but what we are doing here is we fight with these people this is wrong when we have the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we don't have to fight but what would what we would say is the better is this so that you know since there are many riwayat we follow that particular riwayat inshallah taala that is our manhaj am i clear وزاد احمد في اخر قصه قول بلال في اذان الفجر الصلاه خير من النوم ان الصلاه خير من النوم بلال رضي الله عنه ادد الصلاه خير من النوم so you can't make this الصلاه خير من النوم in any of the other adhan this is only allowed in fajr and this is not from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this was from the Bilal radiyallahu an and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam approved it he approved it absolutely no problem inshallah taala wali ibn khuzaima an anis qala min sunnati idha qala al muaddin min al fajr hayya ala al falah qala as salat as salat khair min al naum and ibn khuzaima uh, it is narrated in ibn khuzaima from anis radiyallahu an that it is from the sunnah that when we when the muaddin says hayya ala al fala aw qala as salat khair min al naum to say whenever he says hayya ala al fala what do we say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah not we will not say the same thing what is said by the muaddin rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that qulu uh, ما يقول المؤذن مثل ما يقول المؤذن شيء the way exactly the muaddin says this is the word of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but when you come when you come to hayyalatain when we say hayyalatain these are the two hayyalatain which are that hayyal as-salah and hayyal al-fal when you come to these two wordings that's when you say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah everybody knows this you and every child knows this so we just reminding ourselves inshallah taala as to know what exactly the sunnah is hadith number 145 145 wa an abi mahdurata radiyallahu taala anhu anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allamahu al-adhan fa dhakara fihi at-tarji' akhrajahu muslim walakin dhakara dhakara at-takbir في اوله مرتين فقط رواه الخمسه فذكره مربعا هذا اذان المدينه طيب this hadith talks about adhan of makkah as i told you abu mahdura was a muaddin of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in makkah isn't it so what was the adhan bitarji' 
with tarajya adding four words in that which will be silent which i taught you some time before isn't it walakin dhakara takbiri fi awwali marratayn faqat so there is a ikhtilaf among the ulama on this matter was it tarbi in the beginning allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar or is it only allahu akbar allahu akbar twice so because of this there is a difference and the imam malik took this particular hadith and he made this hadith on based on this hadith he made in madina adhan which is of 17 words 17 words inshallah ta'ala hadith number 137 136 wa anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala umira bilal an yushfa'a al-adana wa yu'tira al-iqamata illa al-iqama يعني الا قد قامت صلاه متفق عليه ولم يذكر مسلم الاستثناء وللنساء امر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بلالا انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه says that bilal رضي الله عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded to announce the adhan each phrase twice and the iqama once except for the iqama where you say qad qamat as-salah qad qamat as-salah now there are few issues that issues that we have to discuss is it allowed for a person to for two persons to give adhan hmm? for example i went to give adhan i stopped at ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah then muhammad comes and gives the rest of the adhan is it allowed yes hmm? for example i gave i say allahu akbar allahu akbar ashhadu la ilaha illallah ashhadu la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah i left then muhammad comes and he finishes hayya ala salah hayya ala salah hayya ala falah hayya ala falah is it allowed no it is not allowed the adhan has to be given by one person yes is it clear you understand the question can a person give adhan one person can give adhan can another person give iqama or the person who gave adhan has to give iqama what is allowed can also give the iqama no problem now can i make iqama half can somebody come and make iqama by uh, half by themselves no now another issue i make adhan i finish half of the adhan i was hungry i go and eat biryani and come back and finish my rest of the adhan is it allowed no the adhan has to be continuous can i give adhan in the state of impurity when i am not in the state of wudu can i give adhan or not yes you can give adhan no problem inshallah these things we have to keep in the mind can i give adhan on the roof of the masjid or should i give adhan inside the masjid what is sahih you can give anywhere should i give iqama at the same place where i have given adhan or should i give iqama at the place where the uh, sorry should i give iqama at the place where the adhan adhan was given or should i give iqama at the back of the imam what is sahih back of the imam can't i give there no you can't give there it has to be behind the imam you call it iqama for the people isn't it is it clear this is the masail we need to discuss inshallah can also give iqama can an imam give iqama by himself He, if he wants to lead the prayer yes no problem inshallah uh, if, if you go to the masjid you don't know what the adhan you don't know so you do it again no you go to the masjid you do not know adhan is given will you go and give adhan no it is not permissible you will wait until the prayer time starts is it clear now if you go to the masjid adhan is not given but the time the prayer and the later 5 minutes left then adhan is not given will you continue praying go and pray or will you give adhan you will give adhan inshallah ta'ala that's the question yeah. is it clear many masail hadith number 137 sorry 147 wa an abi جحيفة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال رأيت بلالا يؤذن وأتتبع فاه ها هنا وها هنا وإسباه في أذنيه رواه أحمد وترمذي وسحها This hadith talks about the etiquettes of a muaddin the etiquettes of the muaddin here Abu جحيفة رضي الله عنه سا بلال رضي الله عنه giving adhan and how Bilal رضي الله عنه gave adhan he kept his fingers in his ears in his ears 
and he was moving he was turning right side and he was turning left side now question arises when we say hayya al salah hayya al salah hayya al falah hayya al falah we know that muaddinin what they do you what do you should do they turn themselves right left and right so how are we going to turn ourselves are we going to say hayya al salah hayya al salah hayya al falah hayya al falah or hayya al salah hayya al salah hayya al falah hayya al falah what is sahih both are sahih either way you can do inshallah okay if you don't do your adhan is invalid your adhan is not invalid your adhan is valid but this comes out under the etiquettes of giving adhan etiquettes of giving adhan during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam until 100 years before there was no electricity there was no mic there was no sound box uh, speakers so what happens is when you turn and call the voice goes to that area the other voice goes to this particular area but if you address somebody this side the voice goes in that frequency so by turning this side the voice might go to in that direction that's why they used to turn this hikma behind this if somebody is not turning there is no issue on that but this is from the etiquette of giving adhan okay when giving adhan when giving adhan how are we going to turn are we going to completely turn or are we going to just turn the head hmm or are we going to around and making adhan i started adhan allah akbar allah akbar and i am going around and making adhan is it allowed no it is not from etiquette you will be standing in one place and while giving adhan you will not completely turn your body rather you will turn your head this is from the etiquette of giving adhan is it clear the high fingers will be inside the ears shall this this no this fingers index fingers will be inside the ears wali ibn majah wa ja'ala isba'ihi fi wudunayhi wa li abu da'ud walaw unuku walaw عنقه لما بلغ حي على الصلاه يمينا وشمالا لم يستدر اصله في الصحيحين this hadith says that when the hayyal salah hayyal salah comes he used to turn his head not completely turning himself or walam yastadir he did not turn completely and showing his back that is how the etiquette of giving the adhan inshallah taala and while giving adhan there are certain things that we need to keep in the mind what are things that we keep in the mind when we say allahu akbar the words has to be clear you can't say ah allahu akbar what does it mean come what will be what 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 happens to the meaning of this particular word somebody says allahu akbar it questions it 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 it, it it's like a question what is the question he is allah greatest na'udhu billah adhan will become invalid it has to be allahu akbar you can't make adhan as allahu akbar some people say they do this isn't it not allowed you have to say allahu akbar allahu akbar bit tartil bit tartil there are some people if you go to some of the masajids you know some of the masajids people give horrible adhan wallahi horrible i do not know if the shaitan runs away but you'll run away that how hard it can be given on sometimes so i advise the masajids to appoint people who give the good beautiful adhan and this is from the etiquette of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is from the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that even of the hadith is that if you want to appoint a person as a muaddin in the masjid appoint a person who has a god a beautiful voice this hadith this masjid this masjid adhan beautiful mashallah sheikh uh, Masood, Sheikh, no, 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 the other one, Sheikh Masood, yeah, Sheikh Masood, gives beautiful adhan, isn't it? This has to be in most of the massages. If you go to some of the massages, we do not know what they say. Ashadu anna muru, something they say. Wallahi, you have to concentrate to listen what they are speaking. If they are talking something, the adhan is invalid. Along with that, you will get the punishment upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know the... you know do you know the reward of the one who gives adhan his neck will be long on the day of judgment because his adhan he gives another hadith says if you if a person gives adhan for 30 years allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his sins in, in on the yawmul qiyam can we take salary for adhan better not to take 
salary but if he is appointed by the masjid or if he is appointed by the government or anything in that case no problem but what is recommended is that a person comes and voluntarily does the adhan even praying uh, leading the prayers and these are all something which is that inshallah we'll be discussing in in the later subjects inshallah ta'ala we'll take the question at the end inshallah we'll try to finish this uh, one hadith don't mind inshallah mark uh, which hadith where, where we are 140 148 We'll take the last hadith and stop. Then we'll take the questions. وعن أبي محذورة رضي الله تعالى أنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عجبه سأته فعلمه الأذان ورواه ابن خزيمة. This hadith says that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم heard Abu Mahdura was imitating how he was giving adhan. And this is the story which I mentioned. He was walking in the streets of Medina, uh, Mecca, and there were some disbelievers who were imitating the adhan. and he heard the voice of abu mahdara was very beautiful ajaba ajaba husawta rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was felt uh, you know what do you say a tremendous he felt a really good about the voice of abu mahdura then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allamahu al adhan he taught him adhan and the adhan is at tarji which we mentioned sometime before inshallah taala with this we will stop here wa barakallahu fikum wa jazakum allah khairan if there are any questions we'll take the questions and otherwise we'll wind up the session barakallahu fiik the question here is a person has missed to uh, he missed to perform salatul witr so how are we how is he going to make uh, how is he going to make qada of salatul witr he got up and he found the adhan is being is be, is given for the fajr in that case what he has to do is he will not pray he'll pray fajr then wait for the sunrise after the sunrise then he will pray witr and how is he going to pray witr for example if you are praying witr one rakah or if you are praying with a two rakah if you are praying with a one rakah then you will make with a two rakah not one if you are praying with a three rakah you will make with a four rakah 2 plus 2 that's how it inshallah it has to be after sunrise yeah, you can wait till the prophet the question is i entered the masjid and the adhan is going on what am i supposed to do do i have to wait until the adhan finishes or do i have to can i pray directly you can pray directly as well no problem inshallah taala but waiting and listening to adhan you will have a reward for it yes yes sorry a woman cannot be a muaddin woman cannot be a imam women can become imam for ladies but there is no adhan for the woman why there is no adhan for the woman because there is no jamaa for the woman there is no congregation for the woman congregation prayer is only for men is clear yeah 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 when you make adhan and you make for example fajr salah you forget to say assalamu alaikum and what is the second question is if you hear a wrong adhan can you you correct it or it will just stay like there are three questions number question number 1 is that if you find any mistake in the adhan do you have to go and correct the adhan again no you can continue praying it no problem inshallah taala but if that mistake which invalidates the adhan as i mentioned in the dars like allahu akbar and if you heard that and they have to repeat the adhan in a correct way number 1 and another question is that if somebody misses any wording of the adhan in between okay they have to repeat the adhan again number 2 number 3 you enter the masjid you are making wudu and the adhan is going on so should i stop making wudu or should i listening listen to this no you can make wudu absolutely no problem inshallah taala Yes. So 
Tahitul Masjid, yes. Yes, Tahitul Masjid can be prayed, inshallah. That is the rights of the Masjid, you have to pray. The question is, a person entered the Masjid and he is in prayer. He is praying to Raka, Masjid. The Mu'addin starts giving Ikama. What is he supposed to do? In that case, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told, once the Ikama is being established, there is no Salah. You have to go and join the Jama'ah. Now, the question arises. It depends on which Raka you are on. You are in. For example, if you are in the second Raka, you are about to finish. Then try to finish it faster and go and join the Jama'ah. Now, if you are in the first Raka, if you are in the first Raka and you know that it is going to take time, then you break the prayer and go and join the Jama'ah. Now the question is, how are we going to break the prayer? Can I just break the prayer and go? Or should I say, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Salaam Alaikum and go? Ulama said, you can say Salaam and leave or you can just directly break and go and join the Jama'ah. The second op- the second thing which I mentioned, right, second scenario where he is in second jama- second Raka'ah and he does, doesn't want to lose the reward. Because of Ulama Rahimahumullah, they say that, Wala tubdilu amalakum. Allah says in the Quran, do not render your good deeds. Because of this ayah, try to make it faster and go and join the jama'ah. But if a person enters the masjid and he, there is already a jama'ah going on, can he make, make sunnah? No, he will not make sunnah. It is impermissible upon him to make sunnah there. Is it clear? No. Adhan was established. No, Ikama was not in place. Is, is it in place? I'll come back to you, inshallah. We'll take the questions here. There are some questions online. Uh, Sheikh, suppose if I miss two rakah of the fourth namaz and as I stand for the third rakah, is it mandatory to recite Surah Fatiha as well another surah in both the rakah? In, in the both rakah? Surah Fatiha is from the Arkanu Salah. Surah Fatiha, reciting Surah Al Fatiha, is from the Arkanu Salah, from the obligatory acts, acts of Salah. If somebody is not reciting Arkanu Salah, if somebody is not reciting Surah Al Fatiha, his Salah will become invalid. Fardan or Jama'atan, even if he is praying behind the Imam. Now, the question here is a person is praying four rakah, Dhuhr. Okay? In the first two rakah, he, he, he recited Surah Fatiha. Does he have to recite Surah Fatiha in the next two rakah? Yes, you have to recite Surah, surah Al-Fatiha. Then the question further he says, and can he recite or is it mandated to recite another two surahs after Surah Al-Fatiha? No. Let me tell you one thing. Reciting any surah besides Surah Al-Fatiha in the prayer, it is mustahab. Whether it is in Fajr, whether it is in Zohar, whether it is Asr, Maghrib or Isha. Surah Al-Fatiha is wajib. Any other surah you recite after Surah Al-Fatiha, it is from Mustahab. It is from highly recommended. So when you pray Zohar and Asr behind the Imam, you will not recite in the third and fourth rakah any surah. Jumhur al-Ulama rahimahumullah, they say that it is from Makru, dislike acts. So we will not recite anything, inshallah. But you can recite in the first two rakah. It, from the first two rakah you can recite behind the Imam. That is only allowed in Salatu Sirriya and in those prayers which are silent prayers, Dhuhr and Asr. Is it clear? No. Another uh, question, can we pray Sunnah while Adhan is going on or else wait for, for, for complete Adhan? You are the question. question. Somebody, it's you, <laughs> you asked. <laughs> the question is answered. If someone came late, join Imam in Ruku, is that Raka count, counted for him? Very good question. The question here is that if somebody came to the masjid and the Imam is in the Ruku, did he get the Raka or not? That Raka or not? Ulama have got two opinions on this matter and both the opinions are Sahih. What is the meaning? I entered the masjid, I saw Imam in the Ruku. So I went in, joined the Imam in the Ruku, I got the Ruku. Do I have to compensate that complete raka at the end? Ulama, they say, since you got the ruku, you got the raka. You got the 
raka'ah. Some of the other ulama they say, like Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, and some other ulama they say that, since you have missed Qiyam, since you have missed Surah Al-Fatiha, in that case, you have to compensate that raka'ah again. This is all a strong opinion. So what are we supposed to do now? Because during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa both the things have been done. So what are we supposed to do in this situation? What we do is, sometimes you do this, sometimes you do this. In that case, you are making things balanced. Is it clear, inshallah? Now, another question. One, of, one friend was asking if we send prayer and salutation upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how does this salutations and prayers reach to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam since he is dead and can't hear us? Very, very good question. And no person who is dead, wala nabi, wala wali, wala peer, wala murshid, cannot hear us. When we send Allahumma salli ala Muhammad or when we go to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we say Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah there ya Rasulullah is allowed not saying from here if you say Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah from here is shirk but you can say ya Rasulullah at the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is allowed but sending salam from here sending salat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from here Rasulullah can't hear but there is an angel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is appointed for this reason Allah will take this angel will take those durood and will be given to will be presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam especially on Fridays and not only your durood will be presented your name also will be presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's why when a person sends salat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid this salatu ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be taken by an angel and will be given to him and it is told abdurrahman has sent now he sent salat and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this how it is inshallah ta'ala another question likewise if prayer and salutations can reach muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so people inside cover also listen dua of people standing outside the cover cover of the dead making dua on behalf of the other people as I told you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا تسمع الموتى No dead can hear. No dead can hear. ولا نبي ولا شهيد ولا ولي ولا صديق Anybody, nobody can hear. A dead cannot hear at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When you are sending salam, angels will take and give it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it clear? Here, the prayer, what is the meaning of prayer? Salatu ala nabi. When we say Allahumma salli ala means we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings. Not that we are asking Allah to pray on him. Allah does not pray on anybody. We have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? The prayer here means linguistic meaning of the salah. That meaning means to elevate the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Blessings of Rasul, upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we say salah of a human being, or salah of a believer, it means we are asking Allah to raise the standards of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And salah of the angels means we are ask, angels are asking for and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the standards of Allah subhanahu of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we say, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayyuhu al-ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah and angels send send salatu ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, oh believers, you also send Salat and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. Any other question here? The women are praying together in Jamaat. Yeah. Is it not about the women to go in front of the or the What is the ruling? The question here is what is the ruling when a woman is leading the woman in the Jamaat? Does the woman has to stand in front or she has to stand in the middle of the Saf? The, what is Sahih is she has to stand in, in the Saf. She has to stand in the Saf. If she is leading in front of the jama'ah, absolutely no problem, inshallah. Because even for the imam, for the men, standing muqaddim al ma'mumin is from the sunnah, it is not from the wajib. Even for the men. Is it clear? No. Hmm. 
the question here is a person was giving adhan and if he dies while giving adhan rahimahullah if he dies while giving adhan what are we supposed to do are we going to continue from the where he stopped or are we going to make the new adhan we are going to make the new adhan again from the beginning inshallah we will not continue from the where he stopped is it clear Hmm. Giving adhan while you are alone is mustahab for the further prayers. It is mustahab. Obviously, for the further prayers, it is mustahab. Otherwise, not necessary, inshallah. Ikama, okay. Ikama is also mustahab. Otherwise, not necessary, inshallah. Both are not wajib. It is from Sunnah. Yeah. He broke his wudu. Ikama. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the question, very good question. A person is giving ikama, the muadin is giving ikama, and um, while giving ikama, he broke his wudu. He continued giving ikama. Ikama is valid, but if he continue praying, his salah is not valid. If you are praying behind, obviously you will pray behind the imam, whether he is giving adhan or ikama or not. If the wudu of the imam is broken, then our salah is valid, not his salah is valid. Our salah is valid. Is it clear? No. But if he, can, if he knows, for example, imam started praying, he was not in the state of wudu, but he led the prayers. He led the prayers. And later, after the prayers, he remembered, oh my God, I did not, I was not in the state of wudu. So what is, what is he supposed to do? He has to repeat the prayer, but he will not call all of them who prayed, Telephoning them personally, calling them to the machine, saying that let's pray because I was not in the state of wudu. No, you will not do it. Your salah will be valid, but Imam salah will be invalid. Salam <laughs> Ikama for them is fine. Inshallah. If they are, yeah, you will give ikama, not her. You will, be, you, will, you will be giving ikama, not the, your, your wife. For example, the question is, if the wife and husband is praying in the, uh, in the jama'ah, first of all, you don't pray in the jama'ah at home. Yeah. Just kidding. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> if you're praying, in case, uh, can, I give, can my wife give ikama for this? No, your wife will not give ikama. You will give ikama, inshallah. Yeah. Ulama, they say you can stand together. Ulama says you can stand behind. There are difference among the ulama. There is no problem. If they are mahr, no problem. You can't go and stand behind, behind in ajnabiya. <laughs> right, both are fine. What is the question? You finish your fourth prayer. Yeah. Okay. You can pray again. It will become nawafil for you. The question is, I prayed the fourth. Can I pray again the fourth? Yes, you can pray. Mu'adh radiallahu an, he used to pray with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he used to go and lead a prayer in the masjid being an imam. For him it is nawafil. For the people behind him it is fard. It's fine. Inshallah. Is it okay if someone is praying? Yeah. It's fine. Uh, uh, question again? Let's say, let's say I'm praying. Yeah. I'm actually doing sunnah, but the other person who is coming. Not allowed. He's thinking I'm doing fard and then he stabbed my on my shoulders and he's joining. No. A per, a question is a person is praying sunnah, another person enters the masjid and he taps on his shoulder. So should I lead for him his prayers? No, you will not be leading. Neither he should tap. It's not allowed, inshallah. Can there have second Question is, can a second jama'ah can be made in the masjid? There is no from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anywhere that there is second jama'ah in the masjid. There is no proof. But, but, always praying in the jama'ah is better. But these things will lead to another fitna. Know what is fitna? For example, people might late, come, continuously come late to the masjid and they know that no, the other jama'ah is going to happen. So they, that will become kind of routine. So in that case, I would recommend not to do it, but doing is no problem, inshallah. This is my personal thing, inshallah. Yeah. There are few people who will uh, do the other on the other 
where what is the point the question is people give adhan <laughs> people give adhan at the grave so that the shaitan will run away what will shaitan do with the dead body <laughs> shaitan has to do something when you are alive what will shaitan do with the dead body now inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun the, the 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 soul has gone back to allah subhanahu wa taala what will the shaitan do with the dead body this is from all you know misconception from among the from our community wallah ha these are the wordings which are uh ayala sala is what do you do what do you say there you will be saying la hawla wala quwwata illa billah a salatu khairum min an-naum is something which is added in the adhan in the only in the fajr only in the fajr that's the meaning of the hadith it's a part of the hadith imam ibn hajar brings out the hadith and he will not completely explain the hadith he only brings out part of the hadith which is necessary there in the in the bab of adhan yeah. Word is being added. Being added, yes. No, we don't say anything for it. If, uh, okay, if they are repeating the adhan of Fajr, so if they, uh, uh, Muazzin is saying the Salaam of Sakumana now, they can repeat the same thing after him? Repeat the same thing, or if you don't repeat the same thing, no problem, inshallah. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, if no question, inshallah, we will wind up the session. Barakallahu alaikum. See you next Saturday with the same... Uh, probably we we are going to some different chapters sheikh in ramadan uh, this dars uh, will be there yeah we'll have inshallah right the, the knowledge will not ramadan will not stop knowledge <laughs> neither anything will stop knowledge sahi probably timings will be same inshallah probably we'll be more attentive in the month of ramadan otherwise in the mind now let's go have biryani let's go have bangalore biryani <laughs> those things will not be there in the month of ramadan in fact you will be more attentive inshallah taala may Allah make us beneficial there is no, imam ahmed ibn hanbal says why you why do you exert yourself too much of worship and knowledge he said i only take rest in jannah so we will take rest only in jannah we will work we will learn we will exert ourselves to worship and this is worship you were sitting here this is a worship angels are making istighfar for us for you and me and you are benefiting you are benefit hundreds of people if we die we are benefited inshallah taala it's continuous sadaqa it's a mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh